Hello everyone and welcome back to our quest system series. In this episode we're going to add a little notification on our screen to indicate when an objective has been completed. So let's get started. Okay so we're going to add a little uh, widget to the screen to display when they completed an objective. Uh, so let's design the widget first of all. So I'm going to go into my folders down here. Why? And we're going to create the widget or our on-screen display notification. So, view, quest, notification. And we're gonna go in there, and we're gonna design quite a simple widget, nothing, nothing too fancy. But obviously you can do whatever kind of design you like, any animations you want, that's totally up to you. You just need the main hooks in there. Okay, so we're gonna do a canvas panel like so and we're going to do simple uh border and let's put our border here at the center of the screen up top here i'm going to put it oh wrong one there you go um and put it down by 200 yeah something like that and we'll just change the size here we'll round it up to 600 say and this one to 150 Cool. Okay, so yeah, this is going to show a um, the text of the objective being completed. So <clears throat> we are going to have in here the border change color to be black, and inside there we're going to have a horizontal box. And inside this horizontal box, we're going to have two things. We're going to have an image, and we're going to have our text. The text here will be the name of the or the obje objective itself. The image is going to be used to do a little animation to indicate when the thing's been done. So we're going to set that text here to fill the available space, and the image we're going to set to be um, vertically aligned to the middle and to the left. This text block as well will also do to the middle. There we are. And this image we're going to change the size of it. So it is by default 32 by 32. We're going to change that to 100 by 100. Yeah, something like that. Now we'll just add padding around the whole entire thing, just to make it have a little bit tidier look to it. Like so, and padding around this text as well. On the left of it. Like so. Okay. So, as for the image, this image we're going to use a simple. Uh, design that we're going to fill in with two images okay so this image here we're going to wrap with a overlay so now the overlay is the one in top and the image is part of it and you make another image there too so i'm going to name these images the first image here is going to be called img underscore uh, check empty and next one we're going to call img check complete <clears throat> and this text here will make variable as well and we'll change that to objective text and let's put in our there you go um what else okay let's change the font size a little bit too there we go and we'll take auto wrap as well so if we do have any long uh, objectives it will auto wrap to the next line so makes it a bit nicer okay now for the actual images themselves uh, so I'm gonna just bring in a couple of images I'm gonna find online uh, let me go to game icons net and we'll just look for a tick uh, or it might be a check let's do a check there you go check We'll do this and we'll just download this one. Okay, the check mark. And I'm going to bring that into my project. So, game icons are not there. It's a useful place to get some icons for free and uh, customize them if you wish to as well. So, the check complete would be this one. So, we're going to set that to, oh, to there. There we go. 
Uh, we'll just change the size back down to what we had 100 by 100. There it is. The check empty is going to have draw as none. Um, so that'll be like nothing there. And then this check complete, we're going to animate to look like a bit better than just it appearing. So we're going to go to animation and we're going to do um, appear animation, I guess we call it. And we'll add the track for that and we'll do check complete. So at the very start, so I'm going to click off my animation here so I can now set a default for this. The check complete, but at the very start, it's going to be render opacity of zero. I'm also going to change its render scale in the transform section. Scale here to let's do 1.5, 1.5. So on the appear animation on this track, we're going to add in the transform track. And we're also going to add in the render opacity track. So render opacity starting at zero is going to go along very quickly. We'll just go to half a second, maybe less than that. And change that to back to one. So it looks like this. And we're also going to change the scale of it. So I'm going to go to scale, add keyframe for that. Go to there and change the keyframes down to one, one. So the appearance of it looks like this. Yeah, which is quite nice. Um, okay, so we're going to go to the graph. And on the construct, we're going to drag out our appear ver uh, animation variable, which will now appear here on the variables. Drag this out and do play animation forward. And then we're going to say after some amount of time, remove this from the screen as well. So we'll just do a simple delay. We'll do just fine. Uh, we'll do, you can do timers, delay, whatever you want. You wait for the animation to finish, you know, whatever. And um, we'll do three seconds. And we'll say remove from parent. Now, whenever you are doing UI like this, where it's not interactable or anything like that, you don't want the player to click on it or anything like that, just make sure that the camera's panel here has been set to non accessible self and all children. That'll make sure that we can't click on it and it won't take focus away by accident. Um, it's just a, a nice way to handle all that. Okay, so um, that's that done. The pre-construct, though, we've got to set up where we change the text for the objective. So we're going to take the objective text and do set text and promote that to a variable and plug that in. I'm just going to make this text here editable and exposed on spawn. And that's it. We're done here. We can close this now. So now to add that to the screen, we're going to go to our quest base. And in our quest base, we're doing the ob on objective ID heard. So this is the event that triggers or function rather that triggers whenever a new objective has been registered as being progressed. Um, but we need to do a check to see is if it, whether or not it's completed or not. So we make a function on here. Go is objective complete. And what it's going to do is look at the particular objective ID. So we're going to go and add an input to this and be a string and that'd be objective ID. And we've basically already done something like this already. So if you go back to our UI where we've done the uh, quest log entry for objectives, we did something similar on here where we got the objective data, looked at the objective ID, and looked at the quest actors progress and seen if it matches the quantity if it has then it's complete so we did this already so if we go back to our quest base and get objective id uh, we want to just take out our, our current objective progress and from there uh, we want to also get our objective data by id which is the function we made previously as well and from there we're going to break that open to get the quantity that we need so I can go from there and do find. I'm going to find this objective ID. So I'm just going to drag it out here and search for it. Objective ID. Okay, and that's going to give us the quantity. And the quantity here is what we're going to compare it against. So is this quantity, the one that's found, greater than or equal to the quantity on here? If it is, then our thing is complete. So I'm going to drag that down there. Plug that in. 
like so. And we want this to fire off and show the notification for this. So on true, create widget, choose our quest notification. And here it's asking for it in text. And we're going to get that from our objective name uh, description here. We'll do description. And I can hide the rest of this. So, and we're going to add that to view pure. Okay, so making use of the functions we made previously, we can find out whether or not an objective has been completed at that moment in time. So if we go back to our on, obje on objective ID heard at the end of this true branch up here, which means we found it and we okay with it. We want to just drag out the is objective complete, plug that in, and then plug in the objective ID in there. Okay, so let's take a look at that in action. So if I go over to my character now and collect the quest and then go into the strange cube, you'll see the notification pop up and then disappear. And there you go. And that now shows in our quest log as being complete as well. Now from previous videos, some of you have mentioned that you can still tick on the tick boxes um, when you're the player. And obviously that's not desired. So what that means is in your quest log here, you can still click on these checkboxes to mark them off yourself. They don't do anything. Um, doesn't actually affect any of the game per se, but you also don't want people to really click on it. So we basically disabled it from being able to receive clicks. So what you do is you go to where your checkbox is. So go to my notification thing here and I click on the check mark. And in the behavior section, you'll see visibility. It's set to visible. Change that to non accessible self and all children. And what that means is that it will still appear as visible and enabled and all that stuff, but you can't click on it. So if I do this, accept, and then go to the quest, I can no longer click this box to mark it as complete. Okay, and there you go. So just do that to every single checkbox and you're good to go. So there you go, we've now got an objective notification on the screen. In the next part, we're going to go through the process of adding other objectives being met. So like killing, uh, collecting items, etc. You can watch the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Lady, where you find all my episodes early before anyone else from just $1 a month. A massive thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone.